Hey everyone, alright, let's continue with class. So I did a couple of short tutorials on just uh, some random tools and problems and things like that. So I'm back to making my crate here. Um, and uh, this lesson is going to uh, go over using open subdiv uh, modifier and uh, kind of working with that to um, finish up our high poly. So um, let's take a look at what I've done so far. So I finished my, um, my high poly version of the main crate. Um, I've taken all my floaters that I've made and placed them around, um, you know, just kind of where I saw fit. So little indents here and there, big indents. Um, I got these custom floaters. I added some bolts, um, you know, just random circle-y things and just stuff that looks really cool. Um, and that's it. So I just kind of placed my floaters around there and uh, and whatnot. Now comes from for the. Uh, you know, typically the terrible part that I always hated with um, doing high poly uh, kind of workflow, and that's chamfering edges. Um, I always, um, I always kind of hate it um, for many reasons. Uh, you saw, you know, probably in the previous um, tutorial, just chamfering stuff adds a lot of weird edges and things like that, um, and it sucks. Um, so I don't like doing it. Uh, but luckily, we have um, a new tool to play with. Again, uh, we did a, a bit of a a topic on it earlier in this class, but I want to go over it again, um, and that's the open subdiv tool. Um, it's a really high poly and kind of intensive way of working because um, it's, I mean, it's sloppy in, in, in the sense that I'm just going to be adding geometry everywhere, uh, whether I need it or not, whereas, you know, chamfering everything kind of adds the high detail just where I need it for the most part, even after I turbo smooth it. Um, so this is kind of, again, really high poly, but I really like it just because it, um, it allows me to A, have some fun with my meshes and get some interesting looks out of them that I may not have thought of initially. Um, and B, it just, I find it looks a lot nicer. It looks really clean and whatnot. So let's take a look at what we can do. So we have, uh, let's start with this little floater here. And uh, so, you know, he's fine. He's a little boxy guy and whatever. Um, let's just uh, isolate him. Uh, I made a bunch of floaters out of these guys, so I'm just going to delete the rest of them for now, just so I can work on one. So he's fine, but I mean, for a normal map, he's not ready, right? He's got hard edges, he's got uh, some faceting there, you know, smooth and groove problems, and he's just boxy. Um, when you're capturing stuff for your normal map, you want all your edges to be nice and smooth and clean, um, and look really high detail, and um, all that stuff will capture really, really nice. Um, so again, so the old school way of doing it, um, you know, I would select my edges. Edges like this would be nice and easy. I could just chamfer them a little bit, All right? Add a bunch of segments, and um, voila, you know, it starts looking um, nice and clean. And then I would clean up the rest of this stuff and all that, and it's great. Um, but then we get into situations like this where I have these edges. And, well, you know, if I chamfer them, obviously I wouldn't do them all. I start getting really stupid corners and things like that. Okay, well, you know, then I got to remove this, and then I can chamfer them. All right, now I get a nicer, rounder kind of um, kind of feel to it, and then I have to go through and like connect these guys again. And you know, it's just a lot of work, and I hate it. I hate chamfering. You know, it looks really nice, but um, again, pain in the butt. So let's backtrack a little bit. And um, let me show you, I can't remember if I showed this in the last class or not, or in the last like um, subdiv class, um, why I dislike chamfering. Sorry, I guess I, um, I uh, did too many things and undo is no longer working. Okay, so um, let me show you why I don't like it on a, on a different example here. Um, so make a, a box. All right, okay, so let's model up our box a little bit. Right, just imagine I'm modeling things here. So I modeled this guy, and I'm like, hey, I'm totally ready. This thing is done. I'm going to chamfer the crap out of it, make it look really nice and snazzy. All right, so let's uh, give it a nice little chamfer. And you're like, voila, I'm done. And it looks great. It's all nice and smooth. But then you're working on it, and you're like, ah, you know what? This box here, I need it to just be a little bit longer, or a little bit shorter, or whatever it happens to be. You know, maybe 
this is too too tall. Okay, well let's you know, let's even that out. And um, you know maybe this guy just you know isn't working. So so I've moved these things around and that's fine, but it's gonna mess up my chamfers. And what I mean by that is when you chamfer something, it's kind of meant to stay in place. When you start moving things around too much, let's say I wanted to flatten this guy out to make it really shallow. Well, this chamfer is now it's kind of going down and then up a little bit. It's, it's not how we would chamfer if it started off in this position. Same with this, it's going up and then curving down. And now your chamfers are going to look stupid. Now, they might not look too, too bad here, but the normal map's going to capture all that stuff. And you're going to get into other situations where you're just going to regret that you ever chamfered anything because then you can't go back and trying to undo chamfers is a nightmare and all that crap. So um, again, that's why I don't like it because once you start chamfering, you're kind of stuck. So what are we going to do with this guy? Well, typically you would chamfer some stuff and then throw a turbo smooth on there and make it all high poly and sexy, but I mean, it looks really stupid right now. Which is fine, right? So chamfering will get rid of all that. Well, let's not chamfer things. Let's add a new modifier in here called open subdiv. Now, open subdiv, really, I mean, all it's going to do by default, um, it's going to be on ice line display. So I'm going to turn that off so I can actually see my polygons. Well, really, it's just turbo smoothing. That's all it's really doing. It's just tessellating my mesh and uh, smoothing out the results, and that's it. So not really big deals for now. So let's go back to my edit poly and I could put the show end results toggle on and off here if I really wanted to work with that. Uh, before we do, let's take a look at what we're going to be affecting to work with this open subdiv. Um, so you're going to go to edge mode. I'm going to select this very same edge that I was um, chamfering before. And uh, we're going to go over here on the right hand side and under edge uh, edit edges there's edge properties, and in edge properties there's two things, there's weight and crease, and we're going to be playing around with the crease. By default all your creases are going to be set to zero. Now if I set this guy to one, what it's going to do is it's going to tell open subdiv being like, hey, this thing is a crease of one, just don't smooth it away. So what it's going to do is it's going to tessellate the crap out of all the geometry around it, but that one edge here, you can notice, that one edge um, is not moving. It's not getting um, you know, smooth this way. If we added our turbo smooth, um, well, it kind of works with that stuff too, but um, you know, if we added a, a turbo smooth afterwards, right, it would smooth that out. Um, so that's kind of what open subdiv is preventing. It's preventing it to um, smooth over that way because we added a crease on that edge. Now we didn't add creases on all of these edges, so that means it can still round out the edge going this way. Um, so let's just do a, a quick little example. I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to select my edges. I'm going to hit Control A to select all of them, and I'm turn all of the creases up to one. Now what that's going to do is it's going to just tessellate the crap out of my mesh here. It's just going to keep adding geometry, but it's going to try and keep all of those creased edges exactly where they were before, um, you know, before we did anything. Um, and in some cases, you might get some nice hard lines like this guy. And in some cases, you're going to get really shitty stuff like this. So it's going to be up to you to go through and go down to your edit poly and decide which things should be creased and shouldn't be creased. And let's see, for instance, here I'm going to ring and loop these guys, all these guys here. I don't want them to be creased. I don't want these edges to stay exactly where they are. I want my smooth to just smooth them out. So. Ooh, excuse me, I'm going to turn my creases to zero. You right click on the arrows, turn them to zero. Same with this guy here. I don't want, I want the creases going this way, but I don't want the creases going this way. So I'm going to select all these guys and turn my creases back down to zero. And now let's take a look at what this looks like. That's looking a lot better. I've got some nice clean edges there. Oh, I forgot to do that one. So let's do that and double click. Control double click to add new selections to that. Uh, we'll see. All right. And we'll turn that creasing down to zero by right clicking on the arrows. Go back to open subdiv. There you have it. We have a nice smooth round edge there. Um, and we're getting a little bit of artifacting there. We're getting some artifacting in here. 
Um, we're getting some weird bubbling down here. So let's solve some of these issues. So number one, let's take a look at this guy here. Now the reason he's bubbling uh, down below is because there's faces here. So it's got to smooth them out and figure out how they connect with the top and all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't really care about these faces on the bottom because they're buried in a box. I'm just going to delete them. And uh, it's kind of, you know, you got to pick and choose what you're deleting and, and whatnot. Um, this guy I'm going to move up because he's intersecting things in a funny way. All right, so that's solution number one. Sometimes you just got to delete faces that you don't need. Unhide all. Now, number two, we're getting these uh, this artifacting on A, the side here. Actually, let's go back here. And on the bottom, on the other mesh. Now, the reason for that is because this is a million-sided mesh. Um, so you are going to have to clean it up. And yeah, cleanup sucks, but you're going to have to clean up regardless of whether your mesh are chamfering or whatever, because you know, Turbo Smooth and Subdiv just work the same way, and they like quads. So um, yeah, let's do this. So sometimes you may want to connect um, your edges in places where um, you want the lines to kind of smoothly follow through your mesh. And yes, I'm adding edges in places. I don't really need edges for my modeling, but I need them for my edge flow. And well, because we're doing a high poly mesh and I do not give two shits about um, how many polygons this is going to be, um, well, I could just not give a shit. So I can add as many um, edges as I like. I'm going to try adding these guys up here. Yeah, it's triangles, but we'll see what that looks like. Uh, and now we have this uh, problem right here where um, you know, there's just like a shit ton of faces here. You could try an inset and at least start off like a little, um, you know, have a little edge there. So let's do that. So this is still going to be a million polygon face here, but at least we're giving it some buffer between the edge because a million poly face that's flat and connected to a bunch of things that are quadded usually isn't too bad of a problem. It may look ugly in the turbo smooth, which may not be something you want if you're going to go to ZBrush or Mudbox. Um, but if you're just sticking in max for now, then that's fine. So that kind of fixed that error. That guy looks like he's triangulating okay for now. We'll see what happens later on. And um, we have this uh, dude on the problem here, on the bottom here. I'm going to do the same solution for him. I'm just going to uh, inset it a bit. And then I can still quad this out if I really wanted to. So I can still connect these guys over. Oops. I can do that on this other side too, but I'm not going to bother for now. So there we go. We have a nice clean edge there. And um, there you go. So everything looks really chamfered and it looks fairly clean and nice and kind of what I wanted to uh, for it to look like um, after I chamfered everything. Now, unfortunately, open subdiv is a little misleading. Um, you know, kind of what it's doing and stuff like that. Um, you can kind of decide, you know, what you want to do with some of these settings and all that kind of stuff. So you could play around with um, the type of smoothing it does, you know, and all that. You can try and uh, keep its corners going, interpolate edges. But really, um, what's going to happen, and the start of my point, which I kind of went off track a little bit, I apologize, um, is that it looks really smooth. It looks like everything is chamfered to hell. But really, when you look at it, it's actually really hard-edged. This is still flat, and it just goes straight down. It's just tessellated really well. So what I like to do is, after I've open, um, did my open sub-div and tessellated the shit out of this stuff, I throw a turbo smooth on top. Um, now, the reason for the turbo smooth, let's take a look at this up close, is it takes these hard edges and just adds a little bit of smoothing in there. You can add you know, however many iterations you feel is necessary for whatever you're doing. Um, and now I'm actually getting some nice chamfered edges. Now, um, if you look at this, you know, this is great. Like, it's nice and clean. All my edges are, are you know, nicely sided, like equally sided. Um, I have a little bit of problem there and there, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, you know, this is all nicely hard-edged, um, and it's great. And it's something that I would hate to have to do with just chamfering and then all that. It's, it took me way less time to do this just with doing some creases. And even if it didn't, the best part about it is I can turn these guys off and my model still looks exactly the same as it did. I didn't 
um, you know, aside from adding a couple edges here and there and cleaning some stuff up. Um, it's not chamfered. If I want to move around some faces, it's not a terrifying ordeal. Um, and it's just nice and clean, and I like it, well, except for this thing. That thing is ugly. Um, but, but it's nice, and I always like being able to go back to my original stuff without having to, you know, reload or actually lose some work. And, um, and that's kind of what Open Subdiv gives you. It gives you a little bit of freedom to, uh, to do what you want. Now, remember when I said it was really high poly? Yeah, it was really high poly. This is not really, not really for the faint of heart, <laughs> if you care about your polygons. Um, so, I mean, this is a floater. I probably, you know, tessellated it way too much for the size it's going to be on my normal map. Um, so that's kind of your choice. You know, I'm kind of just working up close just so I could show you guys. But um, really up to you how you're going to use it and whatnot. But I really enjoy it. Um, it makes life uh, really easy in many ways. And I will show you one other cool thing that it does um, in a bit. But let's solve this one problem here. So let's take a look what's happening. So I'm getting some really crazy looking, looking stuff here and over here too, right? Now the reason I'm getting all that kind of crazy stuff on this side, this guy here and this guy here, is because I inset this and added new edges. So I'm going to convert my selection. I selected the two faces. I held Control and clicked the edges to convert my selection there. Um, well, this thing is still really, um, it's still a really shitty looking shape, right? So I mean, I can do a bunch of things. I can try and uh, decrease its smoothing, right? Play around with its smoothing. That probably made it worse, right? Maybe it didn't really matter. Um, let's take this edge here. So I inserted these guys, so it made these new edges. So if I ring this around on both sides, you'll notice that these rings are actually set to crease of zero, which means it's hard edge, hard edge, and then a smooth edge. So Max is trying to interpolate this like, oh, okay, well, you want hard edges on most of these, but then it needs to blend to a soft edge in between here somehow. So by setting this to one, I can now reduce that bubbliness. And I'm probably getting the same issue here because I added, if you remember, I took out some edges and I, I made these two guys. Um, and so it kept it at zero. So if I push those back up to one, it solved a little bit of problem there. Now down here, I might be having some issues with, um, oh, which one was zero? I thought I clicked on something that was zero. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I clicked something on the other side. So it's doing, um, it's still kind of trying to interpolate things. I mean, it might be trying to interpolate these guys. Right? Sometimes getting rid of those edges is better. Um, sometimes you still have to go through and um, you know, maybe manually add an edge in places. So if I go here and I hit connect, and um, I could do one or two, whatever. Turn that guy up to one. Yeah, it's still kind of giving me a smooth result, but uh, we'll see what it looks like afterwards <coughs> yeah, let's crank that up to one and with some turbo smooths on it should look pretty good if you're still getting some weird errors and and things like that just go through and make sure that all the edges that um, are having an effect on your mesh here are all set to uh, what you need them to be and, uh, and whatnot. So we'll see, maybe we don't need this edge. We'll take a look as we go. So um, anyways, that's kind of some problem solving stuff there. Now, one of the best parts about this crease thing, which we haven't talked about yet, um, I kind of mentioned beforehand, um, giving you the freedom to kind of mess around with your meshes and do some interesting stuff. So um, what did I mean by that? So let me just clean up this mesh a little bit here. Let's get rid of these guys. It's really going to hate this face right now because I left it way too open. Um, let's see if it likes that. It's probably not going to like that either, but that's okay for now. That's yeah, not bad. So let's take a look at what we can do. Let's have some fun with this mesh. Right, so we're going to select this edge right here, and we're going to turn the crease down to zero. And now I have a nice, fairly nice, smooth edge over here. 
I can move this guy back. And that's just by changing the crease. So I haven't even done anything too crazy, and now I can have a cool, smooth looking guy there. Uh, maybe I want to have some more fun. Maybe I want to uh, select these two edges and set a crease of zero and have a round lip on this guy instead of a square lip. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else can we do. This is not an overly interesting mesh, but um, you know, let's take this bottom guy here, maybe turn him to zero. Let's see what that looks like. Now I have a a smooth dip down in here as opposed to a, a harsher looking one. So let's, um, let's turn this off for a second. Select this, I'm going to convert it to an edge select, set the creasing to zero on that as well. And now I have a really smooth dish in here as opposed to a harder edge kind of thing. Um, and now just by changing my creasing I have a much different and you know sometimes much more interesting mesh than um, than I would have had. And again, I haven't actually edited my geometry at all. I've just been editing in my creasing. So if I ever want that back, I don't have to remodel. I have to remove chamfers. Just got to change my weights um, or the crease uh, value. So um, again, really sweet stuff like that. Um, it's really sweet for stuff like that. Let's take a look at uh, some of my other uh, areas here. So I have this. Um, this uh, side piece here, right? It's just like uh, whatever's. So let's turn uh, my subdiv on. And all I've really done so far is just added um, some edges. And uh, then I'm going to add a turbo smooth to sharpen that up. Sometimes you get this crazy fucking thing where it shows you tension, I guess, or something. Um, I hate it. I don't know how to turn it off. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but I haven't had a chance to, uh, to look yet. Um, so let's take a look at uh, what we can do with this mesh here. So let's show the uh, end results here. So what if we take these edges and turn them to zero? Oh shit, now we got like a round thing going on? What if we take um, these guys and turn them to zero as well? Oh, now I have like a sweet looking, you know, um, kind of like gradient up from a hard edge to a soft edge. I can still play around and make sure that looks all all fine and dandy. Um, yeah, maybe I turn these back up to one. And now I have a hard edge but round shape there. That's kind of interesting. Let's take a look at uh, this, uh, this guy in here as well. Maybe I turn him to zero. You know, get a little bit of a curve there, not too much because all this stuff is happening. Maybe we take these guys and turn them to zero. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen with that. Oh yeah, we'll get a little bit of a smooth, smoother result there. So again, just having the power to play around with some of this stuff. Um, well, I don't know what's happening with my mesh here. Might have a double edge. Oh, I think I do have a double edge. Remember that double edge tutorial? it happened. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah, you know, again, have some fun with your um, with your open subdiv. Uh, play around with some of your shapes, and uh, you'll be surprised at some of the things you can get. You know, um, with very little work, with just having some fun. Right, just smoothing around stuff. Yeah, sometimes you'll get really dumb looking things like that and you'll have to work a little harder to to get them to look how you want them to look. I'm probably gonna set these guys to zero. Yeah, a little better, still kinda weird. So I mean it's not it's not gonna be perfect all the time, still gonna be a little bit of work to get it working. Um, but again you can get some really interesting shapes. Um, I will I think I showed you guys I was working on the, um, well, I guess I don't have that here. Yeah, but I was doing uh, another mesh with very similar things. Again, just taking boxy stuff and um, just creasing it up, get you some fun stuff. So don't, you know, don't get too hung up over what your stuff looks like when you're little poly modeling it. Make sure it's clean and semi-interesting and then just have some fun. Let it kind of uh, take you places, you know, just start playing around with stuff and you're like, oh yeah, I kind of like that it's round. Maybe I can add a round piece that goes across this edge here and that would look really 
you know, fancy molded metal kind of stuff, whatever, whatever you're going for. So, um, again, that's a <coughs> that's our subdiv tutorial. Uh, spend time, take your low poly mesh and just um, open subdiv it and turbo smooth the shit out of it. Don't collapse it to another poly so you can go back if you ever need to change stuff. But um, take your crate, whatever it is you're making, and just smooth out all the edges. Make it look as high poly as you can. Slap some floaters on those bad boys and um, you shall have something that looks more or less like this. I'm not uh, fully done my crate here yet. But I've done, uh, you know, my floaters have uh, that stuff. This guy has open subdiv. I'm gonna throw turbo smooth at the end there too. Um, so go through and just, you know, high poly the crap out of your stuff, right? Don't worry about the poly count as long as your computer can handle it. So, anyways, that's it. That's open subdiv. Uh, good luck with your stuffs.